Right, I want us to continue the third theorem that I want us to master in this masterclass Visual X classes. This theorem is called the Similarity Theorem. It's a theorem that starts from your grade 9. If you master your grade 9, your grade 12 will be much more easier. This is called the Similarity Theorem. If two triangles are similar, then the ratio of their corresponding sides are the same. What do you mean by similar triangle? Similar triangles are triangles that are equiangular. What do you mean by equiangular? I simply mean that the corresponding angles are the same. Hence, corresponding has nothing to do with parallel. I'm talking about triangles, yet I'm talking about corresponding angles. It has everything to do with the position. If you look at this, compare these two triangles, let us look at angles that occupy the same position. Look at angle A in the first triangle, it corresponds with each angle in the second triangle. Ah, with angle D, you are correct. So this angle corresponds with this one. What does that mean? It occupies the same position. Let's look at the other angle. Let's look at angle B. Let's look at this angle. Angle B. It will correspond with which angle in, in the second triangle? It will correspond with angle E. Because the sum of interior angles of this triangle and the sum of interior angle of the other triangle, you don't necessarily have to show that this is equal to that one. Because it is, it is the third pair, hence this one will automatically correspond with that other one. This one is equal to that one. Now when we say two triangles are similar, we mean this scenario, where the corresponding angles are, are, are the same or we simply say they are equiangular. Equiangular simply means uh, corresponding angles are exactly the same, as in this scenario. This is what we are given. If two triangles are similar, we are given two similar triangles. And we prove the, the latter part of the sentence. Then the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal. The ratio is something over something. This side corresponds with this side. This one corresponds with that side. This one corresponds with that side. Now, the, the latter part of the sentence says this side over this side must be the same as this side over that side, which should be the same as this side over that side, depending on what you are, you are, you are required to find. Usually you are given three and asked to find one. All right. let, let us prove this theorem. Now, the proof of this theorem lies solemnly on the, on, on, on the construction. How you put your construction becomes vitally important. Let us do the construction. Uh, We've got A, B, C, D, E, F. Let us construct. I'm going to put this one. Let me call it G, H. Construction. We join G, H such that. How do I join my G, H? I want to join it such that this part is the sa exactly the same as this part and that part is exactly the same as this part. That's, what I'm, that's how I'm going to join my GH. I'm going to join GH such that uh, AG AG is exactly the same as what? As DE and what? AH is exactly the same as what? Of course, it's DF. This is my construction. I've joined GH such that this is exactly the same as this one, and this one exactly the same as that one. That's what I'm trying to do. Let me just talk about this theorem. To, to prove this theorem, I'm going to steal also from our grade nine, uh, congruence. That becomes very important. Right, uh, once I do that, I'm going to compare the two triangles. I'm going to prove congruence in triangle AGH and triangle DEF. Those are the two triangles that I'm going to concentrate on for now. I tell the examiner that I'm now looking in triangle AGH and triangle uh, DEF. Let us look at these two triangles and see what happens. Uh, and I know my four cases of congruence. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, 90 degrees, hypotenuse and the side. So 90 degrees, hypotenuse and the side is not going to work here. I can see side 
I can see angle, I can see side. Ah, I know which case to, to try and, and, and prove. In that order, side, angle, side. I start with a side, followed by an angle, then another side. Let's do that. We know that AG, AG is equals to DE. Where do I get that one from? Where, why am I saying this side is equal to this side? I got it from construction that AG is equal to DE. Reason from construction. What else do I know? I've started with the side. What must I follow with? An angle. Look at angle A. I'm comparing these two triangles. Angle A in the first one is equal to which angle in the other one? Is equal to angle D. Where do I get that one from? We were told that these two triangles are similar. In other words, they are equiangular. This was given. We're given two similar triangles. So the reason it's given or similar triangles. If you don't want to, we've got a side and an angle. What are we short of? Of a side. Let's look at the sides that are the same there. It's AH. AH is exactly the same as DF. Why are those two the same? From construction. We've got a side, we've got an angle, we've got a side. Congruence. Therefore, we can conclude that, therefore, triangle, the ones that we are doing, triangle ABGH is congruent, equal in all respect to triangle uh, DEF, DEF. Where do we get this one from? Side, angle, side. Remember, the angle must be the included angle, the angle, the angle between the two sides that we are talking about. So it is true that this triangle is congruent to this one. Triangle AGH is congruent to triangle DEF side and side. That's the case that we have proved. What does that mean? Once we show that these two triangles are congruent, it simply means that if I take this triangle and put it on top of this one, it will be, it's like one triangle. So there are things that will be equal. Of course, from now, now from, from, from the fact that these two triangles are congruent, it means that this angle, this angle will be equal to this one. It means that this angle will be equal to this one. We are taking this from the fact that these two are congruent and this line will exactly be the same as this one because they will be equal in all respect, in respect of angles and in respect of, in respect of corresponding angles and in respect of corresponding sides. Now, once we do that, we can now say, let's, let's call this G1 so that, we can, so, so that it will make sense. Let's call this G1, let's call this G2. H1, H2. Right. Now, we, now that we've proved that this two is congruent, remember what we want to prove at the end of the day. We want to prove that AB over DE is equal to AC over DF. AB over DE is equal to AC over DF. I want us to come back here just a bit uh, to look at these two. Because we are going to use proportionality theorem to prove the theorem. If we've got ABC, A, B, C, and uh, a line drawn parallel to this one, uh, uh, this is D, this is E. We can say a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. We can say that AD over AD over DB over DB is equal to AE, AE over EC over EC, yes. Another option, we can say AB over AD is equal to AC over AC over AE, over AE. This is my option one, this is my option two. I want us to look at these two options. Right. <coughs> We, what is it that we want to we want to prove that? Okay, okay. Before that, let us co let us conclude on something. Look at now. We know that angle E. Look at angle E there. Angle E is equal to what angle here? Is equal to angle G one. Why? Why is angle E equal to angle G one? We co we got that from congruency. From 
the fact that the two triangles are congruent from congruency in the very same way uh, angle okay, before I go further let, let's let's look at angle uh, E again originally angle E was equal to angle what angle E was equal to angle what look at this one angle E was equal to angle B why were this two why are we saying these two are equal we are given originally angle E is equal to angle uh, B this was was given let's just look at the two statements that we've just written we said angle E is equal to angle G1 and we're also saying angle E is equal to angle B what can you say about G1 and angle B angle E is equal to G1 angle E is equal to B what can you say about these two they are equal because both of them are equal to E let's write that one down we can now say G1 is equal to angle B why both equals to E both equals to angle E what have we how to have it done now we've just shown that this one is equal to this one let's go back to grade 9 if I have <laughs> these lines and there is a, a, a transversal line if this angle here if this angle is exactly equal to this one what can we conclude about these lines Ah, they're parallel because if lines are parallel then the corresponding angles are equal now if this angle is equal to this and you are told nothing about this line those lines would be parallel because it is only when if we've got a scenario like this one this angle will never be equal to this one because the lines are not parallel even though they are corresponding angles but because the lines are not parallel they will not be equal but in this scenario where this angle is exactly equal to this one definitely these lines are parallel lines it's the same thing this side we've got this angle which is exactly equal to this angle but these are what are corresponding angles but these are corresponding angles if those are corresponding angles let's continue from here if this if the corresponding angles are equal therefore these two lines are equal therefore uh, UGH is parallel to what to BC the reason corresponding angles are equal corresponding angles are equal <laughs> now we've got this scenario where we've got a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle now once we show that the corresponding angles are equal we are now saying this line therefore is parallel to this one now we've got this line which is parallel to this one what do we know about a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle we've got a triangle now we've got a line that is parallel to this one once you've got a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle it will divide the other two sides proportionally which is the proportionality theorem coming in handy here on the similarity theorem once you've got a line drawn parallel to this side we've got two options we can say this over that is equal to this over that or we can say that over this is equal to that over this one let's do it again we can say AG over GB is the same as AH over HC or we can say AB over AG is equal to AC over AH now it will depend on what you are looking for remember one to prove that AB over DE is equal to AC over DF I've got two options I said the first one is AG over GB over AH over HC the other one is AB over AG let's, work, let's look at what you are required to prove what is it that you are required to prove in this particular case AB over DE I've got two options AG and AB because I've got AB here I'll take the second option which deals with AB let's do it 
if we take the second option because of I, I, I only check what I want to prove this becomes important so I'll have the second option which says a B a B over a G is equals to a C over a C over a H over a H where did I get this one from from the fact that proportionality theorem I've got it from the proportionality theorem. I've got it from the fact that a line drawn parallel to the one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. Let's look at what we have and what we want to prove and what is required to prove. AB over DE, this side I've got AG, so this must change. This other side, AC, AC, ah, it's not the same. Now the problem here is AG and AH. That's what I need to deal with. Because the AB is here, the AC is already there. So I need to deal with my denominators. When I look at this, because I've got DE here, I've got to change AG to be DE, and I've got to change AH to be DF. How do I do that? I said in the beginning, the key is in the construction. Let's look at our construction. We said we are join, going to join the GH such that this will be called to that and that will be called to that. Join the GH such that AG is equal to DE and AH equal to DF. Now I want to change AG into DE. I want to change AD into DE and I'm told and I've, I've, I've stated this in, in the construction that it is the same. So from here I'm going to say AG is equal to what? AG is equal to DE. I got this one from construction. Construction. And also AH and AH is equal to what? AH is equal to DF. We also got it from construction. So it means wherever I've got AG, I can put DE. Let's do that here. Therefore, AB over, instead of AG, what do I put? Instead of AG, I put what? DE. Which is equals to AC over AH. Instead of AH, what do I put? I put DF. Once I do that, I've already proved the theorem that if two triangles are similar, then the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal. Remember, the proof for similarity and proportionality theorem are required in the exams. There are about six theorems that you need to prove all together in, in, in your Euclidean geometry. I want us to look at how we set this in the examinations. Thank you.